Packing all my things for the summer Lying on my bed, it's a bummer Cause I didn't call when I got your number But I liked you a lot Caught up in my dreams and forgetting Hey guys, it's Anastasia and welcome back to my channel. I hope that each of you is having a beautiful day. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It's been quite a long time since I've sat and talked to a piece of camera equipment that is recording everything that I'm spewing out at it. So, in real time, no less. So, I am a little bit nervous. But let's see how this is going to go. Uh... So not too long ago, one of you guys left a comment on one of my previous seasonal videos called How to Be Magical or like 10 Ways to Feel Magical or something along those lines, which was like a holiday video for feeling magical in the holiday season, hence the title. Um, and you asked me if I would be up for making a part two, like an updated second edition for how to feel magical. To which I responded, yes, of course, it would be my pleasure because I had so much fun making that video and it was really, made me really happy to see that people really enjoyed watching it. And this is kind of it. This video probably isn't exactly what you had in mind when you were requesting a part two to how to feel magical or how to be magical and it definitely isn't the first video that would have come to my mind when thinking about ways to approach that piece of content but I am hoping that the message of this one and the substance of this one will be infinitely more valuable even when the aesthetic of it is perhaps a little bit inferior to the holiday one but essentially uh, this is my like Lyme disease story. Essentially what happened was I, for those of you that follow me on, Inst that follow me on Instagram, you might remember on Instagram, you might firstly, you maybe, hopefully you notice that I've been MIA for quite a, quite a while and perhaps some of you, a smaller fraction of you might have noticed that I posted um, a few weeks ago saying that I got very sick and I apologize for the absence and the hiatus that will ensue following that point. Um, but in a nutshell, uh, around the 4th of July, I went home for the holiday, for the long vacation, and we were, I went on a day trip with my family to this really beautiful, charming town called Doylestown, where it's one of my favorite places. I've been there many times. I've taken a lot of pictures there. I've recorded some videos there. Um, there's a legitimate, like, a literal castle on the premises, um, which also has made many an appearance in my content. So, long story short, I love Doylestown. It's one of my favorite places on earth that I've seen so far. And my family and I decided to take another day trip during the 4th of July weekend to walk around and enjoy the day there. And while we were at the castle, I thought it was a good idea to lower myself to sit on the stone ground of a sta stone staircase adjacent to the castle to take a cool picture because the background was all gray and cool and long story short um there were a lot of mosquitoes in that close to the ground and i thought that i got bitten my mosquito and mosquitoes love me and i don't love them so my body tends to react like the mosquito bite swells up and everything is pretty gross and not my favorite thing in the world and i thought that i got bitten by a mosquito because i saw a mark bite mark and I thought nothing of it because this is very common occurrence in my life because I tend to sit on the ground in a lot of places because I think pictures on the ground are cool and then I suffer the consequences and basically I forgot about it until I think a few days later when I noticed that I was having like I was starting to have a reaction and I thought maybe it's an allergic reaction or I got infected or something happened but I was like, okay, that sucks, that's strange, that usually doesn't happen, but I didn't think much of it. And then, about, I don't know exactly, but maybe like a week later, um, it started to get really bad, and it was like looking like awful, and I realized this was not normal, like my body's react, something's happening, so um, essentially I like talked to a doctor on the phone through my, through like the service that is provided through my insurance, and doctor was like, oh, well, I'll just like prescribe you some antibiotics. And I was like, okay, that's great. And hopefully this will go away because it's starting to get worse and worse. And it's like itchy and painful and looks terrible. I have to keep like bandages on it. I don't know what's happening. It's scary. And I was on antibiotics and then it cleared up and went away. And that was fantastic. And I almost forgot about it until 
um, about, I don't know, I want to say like a week later or like a week and a half, maybe two weeks. I mean, I can consult a calendar and tell you exactly, but it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, basically like one to two weeks later, um, I was at work and it was the afternoon and my throat started to, like my like lymph nodes started to feel kind of funny and painful and I was like, okay, this is kind of a strange thing that I use. this is a strange like uncom discomfort that I'm not used to. And essentially by the end of the night, like my throat and like neck started and jaw and chin started to feel very painful and very uncomfortable. And I thought, well, like this probably is what swollen glands or swollen lymph nodes might feel like. That's what it feels like. And I looked up on, I looked up online and like essentially that's pretty much probably what was happening to me. I had like swollen lymph nodes um, where like you couldn't really see them swollen at that, that point. But like I could tell it was, it was like, that's the direction that things were moving in because it was really painful and just getting worse and worse and that pain um, essentially like lingered for the next like, day, two days. I took Monday off so I planned to go home but like on the on like Sunday or something I don't remember exactly but I was gonna spend like Saturday in New York and I decided okay I feel terrible I might as well just go home early because like this sucks and um, by the end of the day, Saturday, I like felt so bad that I remember I like was walking around trying to like, I was like walking around outside like trying to enjoy my day and like distract myself from like feeling bad and by the time I got back home and I lay down to just like rest before packing and like heading to the train station and I remember I like, I think I like fell, just like fell asleep and I remember just feeling like completely spent and like chilly and cold and I just like I couldn't, I was just I was just like not a person and somehow I managed to like muster up enough strength to like pack and journey all the way to Penn Station and then journey all the way back to my like home in Pennsylvania and um, that night like my mom like took my temperature and I had a fever of 104 or like perhaps I think it might have even been like a little bit higher because the thermometer that we use is actually like a couple increments um, like behind so it might have actually been even higher than that and like my mom freaked out and I was kind of like too tired to like too out of it to freak out but um I had like a bunch of like pain medicine trying to like, kick back the fever and then kicked back a little bit but it was still super high and um essentially like the next day it was extremely high too and I had like these horrible headaches that just I, I couldn't get out of bed because my head was just like it hurt when I was lying down, but as soon as I get up, it just felt like my whole head, my like my brains were just like swishing around my around my skull. It was just not a good feeling, and um, essentially, like I was very sick for the next couple of days, where the headaches were just terrible. Like ibuprofen would help kick back my fever some notches to like make it so that I'm not I wouldn't die right then. But the like it would have absolutely no impact. Um, it would do nothing to like alleviate the headaches that were like I was suffering with. And what else happened? Um, I had like my skin was like covered in like dot like a rash, just like dots. There was just like dots, red dots everywhere, and it would like co like consistently like migrate. So it would, like there would be like red flex and like dots on my knee, and then it would be like on my calf, and then it would be on my like, arms. It would just kept like um like navigating like my body and would just like would go in and would show up in a different place and I didn't know what that was that was like scary and um one of those days like my joints started to hurt really bad where sorry my camera died and like didn't record the things I was saying but um essentially like so the joint pain then like migrated to other parts of my body and then it was like my knees my hips my like elbows my shoulders everything hurt but the worst was like my still my hands where it got to the point where like i couldn't i had to ask my mom or my dad to like open water bottles for me like untwist the water bottle um for me because i couldn't like i couldn't do it myself it hurt too much and that was also scary I'm like, okay, this is clearly, I'm clearly like disintegrating and falling apart and like my body is fragmenting, what is happening? Um, so like essentially, um, it was also like, it was clear that I had to like go to a doctor, but it was, that was also kind of a frustrating experience because like my insurance provider is like kind of like more exclusively like the, in that, the network is like exclusively geared towards like New York and I don't really have any like doctors that fall, that are in network in Pennsylvania so it was kind of frustrating to like find someone that I could go to and everyone I would talk to on the phone like I was like 
queer with feeling terrible and like trying to call like dial up to all these people and everyone would kind of like direct me to a different like redirect me to somebody else and that was like frustrating like I would call up like a doctor and they'd be like oh we don't like do blood work or we don't do this so like your best bet is to go here and then like I would call like the other place and they'd be like oh like, like, be like oh like go to an urgent you should go to like an urgent care clinic um like it sounds serious like and I'd go to an urgent I'd call up an like, urgent care clinic and then they're like oh like your best bet is like to go to an ER or like I would talk to another doctor and they'd be like like so oh the other thing is like this entire time I was under the impression that I had some sort of a mosquito-borne virus because like to me it was that like it was clear in my mind like that mosquito bite that was like so terrible like terrible it was not a normal mosquito bite um it seemed like way too much of a coincidence for for that to happen and then just like a little bit of time passes and then I have all these symptoms that like I have never um experienced before like the set of symptoms that are like unrecognizable like it seemed like too much of a coincidence for those two things to be unrelated and for there to be like no correlation between those events so I like after looking up after like researching online I identified that like this like West Nile virus has a lot of the same symptoms that like has like the swollen lymph nodes and the high fever and like the horrible headaches and um, joint pain and like all of these things seem to cook for me so I was like I was pretty convinced that that was something that was like a, there was a good chance that that was what I had or perhaps some other mosquito borne virus and the scary thing about West Nile virus is that there is no like cure there's no treatment so you can't just like go on a course of antibiotics and have it go away because it's not it doesn't exist yet so essentially all you can do is just kind of wait it out and like try to heal and like um like bed rest rest like bed rest um like fluids you know just like the way that your body can have its like natural course of healing um, unless it's like so bad that you have to be in the hospital like hooked up to fluids and things like that but essentially there's like nothing that can be done which is one of the other reasons I wasn't like running to like I wasn't being like rushed to the ER because it's like if there's a pretty good chance this is it and like what are they like no one's gonna do anything for me um so it was also frustrating where I would like talk to like a doctor and say like well like I want to make sure that this is what I have and they'd be like well um like it if this is like for someone that has this we would like send you to an infectious disease clinic anyway like we wouldn't be able to help you so I was like okay I guess I'll talk to I'll like find infectious disease clinics in my area and then I would find like infectious disease physicians and I would talk to them and they would say well we would only be able to help you once we know for sure once you go to your family care provider and like how like have the blood work and then we just get the test and then we'll like once we know we we won't diagnose you um and I'm like, okay, well, like, out of curiosity, if once I'm diagnosed elsewhere and come to you, like, what will you do for me um, if that is, in, in fact, the case? And then they'd be like, oh, like, yeah, like, we'll cure you, we'll treat you. Of course, like, we treat West Nile. And I'm like, well, that's fascinating. Like, how do you treat West Nile if there is no known treatment? So it was just, like, a frustrating experience that, like, in itself, when you're already sick and, like, you're struggling to, you know, um, to, like, talk on the phone and it's, it was kind of, it was just an, another frustrating component that was part of that experience and um, essentially like my three day weekend at home ended up turning into the entire week being at home and like my office at work was like very understanding, it was like take care of yourself, like take care of your health, even it's fine. So I ended up staying at home and the headaches wouldn't go away, I was feeling terrible, like just completely out of, just like kicked out of, out of gear I don't know like there's an expression but um in Russian the expression is called like wish wish or historia or I'm pronouncing it wrong but essentially like you're just like malfunctioning I guess or like you're just not working anymore um where like I just couldn't I couldn't do anything I was just sleeping in bed all day and um that was the best part because then like I didn't feel the pain but then I would wake up and like my head would just hurt terribly my joints hurt and um it didn't seem to be getting better the swollen lymph nodes went away, but that was essentially the only thing. And finally, I was able to find an urgent care clinic and get there. And the doctor, as soon as the doctor like, saw me and heard my symptoms, he was like, he, I showed him a picture of what the bite looked like previously. And he told me, like, this looks an awful lot like Lyme disease. Like, everything checks out. West Nile virus is, like, very rare um, for someone, like, young and healthy to... Like, it's very rare for someone young and healthy to be able to, like, actually even feel the symptoms. Like, usually it's when you're, like, older or weaker that the symptoms are worse. And, like, people that might get West Island virus, like, in youth, don't even know that they have it. So, like, it was very, very rare for that, for, like, that severity of symptoms to be affiliated with that for a person my age. 
and he was like convinced that it sounded like Lyme disease so I had like blood work done I had um, I was prescribed antibiotics for Lyme disease and so my camera died again um, or I ran out of space but it's all good but essentially the doctor prescribed me antibiotics for Lyme disease and I like after I started taking them like my symptoms magically um, like most of the symptoms magically went away like the the like skin ailment and the joint pain and um, all those things went away and my headaches got like so much better um, they didn't go away completely because it was like I mean there was a lot of headache to conquer with those antibiotics but like they got a lot better and I, I felt much better, which was like a relief because then clearly if it, if it was like West Nile or something, then I wouldn't be responding to the end to the treatment. So that was good, but I was still like extremely weak and fatigued. Um, so I ended up like staying at home for a second week also so that I could kind of like rest up and like take care of, um, to like try to get back on my feet because I was like, like, I still would just be in bed all the time and just sleeping all the time because like if I would get up I just I would feel wiped out like go on my computer for like 10 minutes and feel wiped out and have to sleep like sleep it off. But the scary thing about Lyme disease is that like when it's in the acute period where it's like very fresh um, and the symptoms are really like the worst, um, if you like if it's treated enough well enough with like adequate dosage of antibiotics and like adequate rest and everything and feel like it's completely eradicated then like that's good it's gone but in the case that it's not fully um it's not fully taken care of then it like this i don't this isn't like proven i guess but um they call it like chronic lyme disease where you have a chance where it like stays with you like for like the rest of your life um, or it's like it becomes like extremely difficult to cure where like the symptoms might like recur um, at a later time like months from, from that point from like the point of infection or like um, like years even years down the road and the scary thing about that is that like at that point it like becomes like a serious like it seriously diminishes your quality of life consistently and like it becomes a debilitating condition where like, you people can't like people can't work or it's like it really affects your life um, severely and it was just scary to think that it's like you I don't know how to explain it but you don't like know at what point like I felt helpless because like your symptoms can go away but you don't like it's difficult to pinpoint to identify like when it's gone if that is indeed what you have it's such a gray area where you don't know like you don't know how many antibiotics are gonna like fully eradicate this from your system like you don't know how much rest you need or like what rest entails or like what defines like rest that will that will like avoid comp like like how to avoid complications i don't know it's just like it was scary that the symptoms go away but you don't really know what's actually happening under the like under the hood what you can't see you can't control in a sense um like what you can't measure you can't really like optimize for I don't know, the worst part of that experience was, I guess, the, like, uncertainty and feeling of helplessness and, like, being out of control. It's, like, just scary to just not know, like, what's going on or what's going to happen. But, essentially, like, I feel much better right now. This was my, I went back, I returned to New York this past Sunday and I had an entire week um, in New York going to work, like, back to my routine. And I feel so much better. Um, I'm still, like, on treat, like, on the my second course of antibiotics and oh something that I said before the the camera cut off which I think it yeah it, it probably cut off so I don't know if it actually recorded or not I was saying that my like while I was home for the second week and I was like trying to heal and everything like my mom was an absolute trooper the whole time where she was just like spending hours and hours online like researching like remedies and like ways to heal me and get like strengthen my immune system um to like help it battle like the illness and she would make me like power smoothies with like beets and like all these different things and um she would make me like herbal like healing teas and get me like oregano oil and all these different things that she was like forcing me to have but um i mean like i feel so much better so, so i'm sure it played like a vital role in addition to like the like antibiotic treatment so if you're like i don't know if anyone finds this video like who has 
who has been diagnosed with Lyme disease or suspect that they might have it or are like experiencing a lot of the same symptoms. If you're interested in like hearing about some of those like natural remedies that my mom was like discovering and implementing into my um, recovery period, then like please let me know in the comments and I will like go back to her and like write it all out for you and get you that information for like what was hopefully like um, played a role in helping me feel better. And um, yeah, I just like wanted to add that in there. But so that's my little story of what has been going on for the past two weeks of my life. But you might be wondering like what just happened, Anastasia? Like we thought that you were going to tell us a story about how to feel magical and how to be magical. And that story just took a entirely like different turn than we had expected. And like this is not what we were signing up for. Um, but essentially like. What I wanted to, the reason I wanted to tell this and to share it with you is because, like, the amazing thing, in the, in what I'm about to tell you, like, this is not, this is not new, this is a cliche, um, but I just think it's important because, like, it's a cliche that is often forgotten until you are, like, in the situation where it becomes, like, all you can think about. Um, which is the case, which is, was the case for me in the past few weeks, where, um, like, the entire time that I was, like, kind of wallowing in, like, this, like, unfortunate situation, those two weeks that I was just literally, like, lying in bed in, just for two weeks, just lying in bed for two weeks, the thing that I kept thinking about, that my mind kept returning to in those, like, two weeks that I was just lying in bed with nothing to do, was how much I missed everything. I was texting with a friend and he asked me like what are you like what are you excited about like tell me like, like he asked me like an attempt to put my mind into like a positive headspace on any given day I, I could have like muster up like any number of exciting things that would make me excited and like they're usually big things they're usually like oh like I'm excited for you to get your puppy here like, oh I'm so excited for like autumn and like all the things I'm gonna do then like I'm excited about going to the beach I'm excited about like, this personal project or personal venture I'm excited about like I don't know something a little bit like more out of the ordinary or like more universally fun and at this moment like it dawned on me like that's the point where it dawned on me that like I'm just excited to like, go outside I'm just excited to stretch my legs and I'm excited to like see I'm excited to like see a tree, like see the sky. I'm excited to feel the air on my skin. I'm excited to just go back, like go for our lunch walks. I'm excited to just giggle. Like, I don't know, just like things that would typically just be a part of like a routine day to day reality. And those are the things that I miss tremendously. Um, and like that's why I say it's such a cliche thought because, of course, like. Of course you don't know what you have till it's gone, of course you take things for granted. The things that are your baseline reality you reject as your baseline level of existence and therefore it's not special and you need to like, you need to shoot higher for something to excite you. Um, but when that baseline is disturbed, um, like pushed back, that's when you realize like this is not a baseline, this is, this doesn't like you're lucky to have this like it's you're it's a privilege for this to be your baseline level of existence because it could it's not it's not the the lowest level like it could get lower um and you're lucky to have that bar set where it is and i guess i wanted to the like the reason i wanted to talk about this in the context of that video because that video was called like how to be magical how to feel magical and it was about like, how to like raise yourself up to feel something beyond your like your baseline level of existence to feel like more extraordinary than you like than you feel on a regular um like during your regular day-to-day -day routine but for this video like the point that i wanted to drive home was that like your baseline level of existence is magic like breathing is magic the things that you brush away as being just like average boring routine and like basic like those things are, are like so magical and i guess like the point that i want to drive home is that like in the context of like physical illness that's so i think that link is so clear and so obvious when you're physically not feeling well you become so aware of the like disconnect between your mind 
and like your body where it's like mentally just well you like remember what it feels like to to not feel bad but your body feels like a cage where it's just like locking you into this and you can't like you become so conscious of the fact that you're trapped in your body and you can't like your mind can't make yourself feel good your body's kind of like keeping you feeling this way um or like the illness is like keeping your body feeling that way and I think like I don't have to convince you of that like of course when you feel sick then it's like oh of course I had it so good before um but I think it's just like to like take that that concept and like to expand it a little bit and like remember that like your life is the same way where it's like the things in your life that you take for granted like there's so like so many of them are so beautiful when you think like at, when you're faced with the prospect of not having them anymore, they're so, they become so beautiful. Um, again, it's not, this is not groundbreaking news. Hopefully this video is just a reminder of that, like, universal bit of wisdom um, that is unfortunately not, like, universally present in our lives because it takes getting sick to remember it or it takes losing something to be reminded. But I don't want any of you guys to get sick in order to get this reminder to love your life. I'm hoping that my illness from the past couple weeks can be utilized as a reminder for you guys to remember that like to feel magical and to feel surrounded with magic you don't need the most extraordinary thing to happen. You don't need to go out of your like go out of your skin or go out of go out of your mind to find it. Um, I think that sometimes like I think that sometimes the most potent magic comes from taking a step back and recognizing that your normal state of being, your, nor your normal, your baseline physical state of existence, the nature that surrounds you, you're not entitled to. It is always a privilege. It's always a privilege, not an entitlement. I think that shift in thinking from viewing your from viewing normalcy as an entitlement to viewing it as a privilege is where the like most grandiose sense of appreciation and magic comes from. And that, my friends, is just the little takeaway that I hope that you can take away from this video. That's what I wanted to share with you. It's nothing extraordinary by any stretch of the imagination. There's not a lot of imagination in this video. I hope you were able to enjoy it regardless, but I just think that it's so important. So important to remember that sometimes like the most extraordinary, like, it's, it's cringy to me to say this out loud because it's so obvious, it's so cliche, but it's so difficult to keep in your mind on a regular basis that I think that that, that in itself makes it makes it worthy of a cause to reiterate it to you guys today because i know i struggle with this i struggle with having this reminder not as not as a once in a blue moon reminder but as a constant source of perspective in my life i struggle with this so i struggle with it i know that there's someone out there who struggles with with keeping this in mind as well so i hope that this does that this video does that for you just reminds you that we're pretty pretty lucky to be alive and yeah did you did you see that that dwindling of that energy every time I film a video I always like hype myself up and I'm like really excited I want to talk to you guys I'm super hyper and then I talk and throughout the course of the video I die so this is the ghost of Anastasia that is wrapping up this video for the late human Anastasia who was unable to finish this video. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what's going on with your life. Let me know. Let me know what you're excited about. And let me know what you are not excited about but that are will now be excited about after having watched this video. Like little things that you don't typically realize that you enjoy but now that now that you come to think of it you realize you would be very lost without please tell me those things in the comments and i'm going to go i'm going to hug my dog i'm going to 
to squeeze him to death. I'm going to kiss his forehead. I'm going to smell his forehead because it smells delicious. Really, it smells so good. And that is it for today, my friends. Also, please let me know what you think about the little moment diaries that I've been posting. I posted two so far. I have a third one on the way. Hopefully, the constraints of that video will will inspire me to find new ways to keep them fresh and to keep the visuals um, you know, dynamic even when the shot is static. I will work on keeping them interesting, um, but if they are currently uninteresting, please let me know. If they currently are interesting to you, also please let me know. I just, I'd love to hear more feedback. Um, that's something that you want me to keep, like, I mean, it's something that I want to keep going because it's like a literal journal, like it's literally like sharing, just sharing my thoughts with you, so I'm just curious to hear what you think. And I would love to hear what your thoughts have to say. I would love to have our thoughts in dialogue with one another is what I'm trying to say here. And I love you and I'm going to go. Okay, bye. 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 I love you. Officially, this is Dan. Bye. Ты меня не слушаешь?